you're spending a lot of time going back to relearn, you may want to consider a mastery program. Hi you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jill and if you don't know me, I'm the homeschool mom to a nine-year-old girl in the fourth grade. We have just done our midterm review and like everybody else, and already I'm starting to look for curriculum for next year. Why? Because this is the time to do it. This is where, you know, you're not pressed to do it. You don't have to do it, but it means that when you start, you've got time. You have time to look at other people's videos and other people's flip throughs. And my biggest my biggest problem has been math, but it's also been the funnest thing. We have done, Morgan and I have done a ton of math. We did Saxon 3, we started with Saxon 5-4, and that's when we realized we had a little bit of a, uh, we had memory gaps. And they are really difficult to fill in with a spiral program, which is what Saxon was. So I did my own research, and I moved Morgan to Matthew C. And because I didn't know how to start, since it's a block format, as I'll talk to you about that, it's mastery. We started with alpha and then we did alpha essentially the whole year of first grade in one month. Then we did beta two months, two and a half months. And now we're doing gamma. We should finish gamma before the end of the year and then start into delta. So we're doing a crazy ton of math. I don't know that I would suggest it, but there is a reason why we are doing it. Now, why do I want to do a Matthew C review now? Because one, I feel like I know a lot about Matthew C and I didn't fully understand when I was a new homeschool mom last year, I didn't fully understand the difference between spiral program or spiral approach and mastery approach. And so I just picked, and I could have gotten lucky if I flipped a coin, maybe I would have ended up with Matthew C and then not known that Morgan was not a spiral girl. But quite frankly, I'm really glad we figured it out because we learned a lot about ourselves. Morgan and I are both mastery girls. And so for the near future or the mid future, we're going to stick with Matthew C. The main thing to remember is no matter what you choose, your child is going to get all of the math. It's just going to be presented differently and it'll be presented in a different amount and in a different order. And that's where spiral and mastery change. Spiral is, to somebody who's a mastery, spiral just seems like a poof like a, a shotgun approach on the page of there's a little bit of this and there's a little bit of that and there's a, there's a new concept here and they touch on it and then they move away and then in a couple of weeks they bring it back and then they add to it. In fact, if you have really interested kind of kids who, yep, got it, yep, I like that and then they get it and then they come back around and, and build on it, it totally works. There's a ton of kids who thrive on Saxon. If you find that if, you're, if you choose a, a spiral program and you find that your child three weeks later says, oh, I don't, I don't remember how to do that. And you can go back and you can reteach it. And that, that might happen. That happens a couple of times to everybody. But if it happens frequently and you frequently find that in order to finish one lesson in the day, you're spending a lot of time going back to relearn, you may want to consider a mastery program. And here's why. Mastery programs are done in blocks. It chooses math according to subject and it keeps your child on that subject until they're ready to move on. There's no timeline and the lesson just keeps going. In fact, you'll see as I do a th flip through, per every lesson, there are seven or eight pages. So you can do one a day, you can do two a day. It depends on how much the child wants to practice. But when they say, I got this, this is, I totally understand this. Or you find that the, by the third day, they're, they're still 100%, they're doing everything, they've got it, they get it. You don't have to do the rest of those pages in the lesson, move on. Now on the flip side, if you have a child who's done all of the pages and they're still stumbling a little bit on some ideas, the really nice thing about Matthew C is you can go online and you can pick uh, extra things that you want them to learn. So say they're having really trouble, a lot of trouble with maybe double digit addition and they're great with single digit, but they're just stumbling a little bit on, on double digit. You can go, they've finished all their lessons, but you kind of need more, you can go online and you can get more. When you stay on that topic and you don't move on until you've mastered, that kid has it. Now, it doesn't mean, mastery programs don't mean that you won't ever spiral back. You will do review. It's not a spiral learning approach. It's a block mastery. And then as you go, it does go back to do some quick review. And so, that is very helpful as well. So if you're worried about forgetting, you won't or we haven't, and it works really well. And if you do, 
you can go back online and you can pull up some of those extras. What I find interesting is that Morgan also takes ownership of her math. So she knows that if she needs to stay on a, on a topic, she wants to hover over something for a little bit longer. She knows that she can do that and she doesn't feel bad about that at all. She really wants to learn the math. On the flip side, she's looked at me a few times and said, I get it. <laughs> so she's figured it out that she's gotten it before I figured it out, figured out that she's gotten it. And so she tells me, mom, it's time to move on. Listen to your kid. They're usually right. <laughs> so then I'll go, okay, got it. Then we won't do E, F, and G of those, those pa the pages in that lesson. And we'll move on. Maybe we're on lesson 23, B. She's got it. She wants to move on. Then we go to lesson 24A and then start there. So that is something that I found that is really interesting is that she's taken ownership of her math as well. I have found that Morgan has become considerably faster with her math facts and her mental math not in small part due to the visuals. So they have, Matthew C has manipulatives. They are fantastic. And so it's just wonderful when you see a kid who's maybe been struggling with a concept and then you get the manipulatives out and they look at you and go, oh, I got it. So there's just so many aha moments. And we actually would only use the manipulatives sometimes now, but the fact that they're there, that we can pull them out and use them is just so helpful because when you pull them out and you, you physically build something for them to see that's not on paper and then the light bulb goes off, it's awesome. Some kids need that. Morgan and I do. <laughs> Once you've done the individual placement test, that's when you can order the book and feel pretty good about getting the right one right off the bat. And remember, your kids can work at their own pace with each one of these books. Primer is gonna be your first book, and that's generally the first introduction into math. So I don't have that one, but I'll start with Alpha. Because there aren't that many problems per page, we will do two or three pages a day. And in fact, since we're kind of catching up and just filling in gaps that we need to, that really need to touch on, we're moving at quite a good speed. So Morgan does, now she's doing three pages in the morning and then for quiet study, she has an extra page. She's really just been zipping through it. When she reaches the where a lot of the stuff, the majority of the math is new, that's when we'll slow down and we'll do one or two pages a day or adjust however we wanna do it. The nice thing though is that we can do more. We can just do one page or we can do a whole ton and it's great. It sort of makes us feel like we have more control than other programs. But the actual course, each one, primer, alpha, beta, gamma, they do blocks as well. So for instance, alpha is single digit addition and subtraction, and that is what you focus on. Beta is multiple digit addition and subtraction. Gamma is single and multiple digit multiplication. Then delta follows that with division. Epsilon is fractions, and zeta is decimals. Now, if you've noticed from that list, Decimals don't come into play in elementary school until further on down the line where decimals might be introduced in the fourth grade in public school. It really won't be covered fully and to mastery until the sixth grade. So if you choose this program, know that if you swap into a spiral, you may find that they're jumping into the deep end because they haven't had fractions and decimals. They just weren't introduced in the mastery program yet. But by the time you finish sixth grade, you are right on par with everybody else. You have had all of the math that everybody else has had. So that's a good peace of mind for me. Something that I think is worth mentioning is the cost of math you see. I don't feel like it's absorbent. The total for the universal set is $182, but what you're also getting is the manipulative kit, and that will take you all the way through your math. There's an Extra one for fractions, I think, and decimals later on. It's sort of an add-on that you can purchase later. But all told, if you buy one universal kit each year, you only need to buy the student workbook and the teacher's manual, and perhaps if you want, the DVD. But the universal set covers the integer block kit, the instructional manual, the instructional DVD, the student workbook, the test booklets, 
and the digital pack. I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't use their DVDs. They have the digital pack and it comes with it. And I find that to be more helpful. I haven't used a DVD in over a decade. It's a little antiquated, but it may help people who want that kind of format. What I find is the digital works well for me because not only do you have everything that the DVD has, you've got the classes that you can watch either before you teach the child or you can have the child watch or you can watch it together. And then the digital format also has the ability to generate extra worksheets if your child needs a little extra help in one topic or another. So that's where we are with math. And we like, all told, we like math, you see. There are tons of wonderful programs out there. If you have a mastery kid, this may be the curriculum for you. If you don't, there are many others out there that would probably be better suited. Mainly, they're all good. You just really want them to match your kid. So I hope this video has helped you in some way and gotten you off on your journey to find a fantastic math program. It took us a while, but we know ourselves a lot better and I don't regret that journey. I just regret the cost of having to go through it since we went through so many programs. And I hope that you don't have to do that. So I hope this video has helped you. If you like it, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Happy homeschooling. See you later. Bye.